Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, New York by Night. We are continuing our story about a coterie of Camarilla kindred encountering the dangerous mysteries of the New York City Nights with Season 2, Episode 4, All the Mystery. Let's now meet our mysterious vampires. Hello, I'm Nora Ibrahim, and tonight I play Kalita the Ventru. Hello, my name is Cynthia Marie, and I play Coco the La Sombra. Hello, I'm Xander Genre, playing Braun the Nosferatu. Hi, I'm Michelle and Bradley, and I'm playing Kiem the Toreador. I'm Jason Carl, your storyteller. Before we delve into those mysteries of the New York night, let's thank some non-mysterious and very special people. Let's thank Renegade Game Studios, our Vampire the Masquerade and World of Darkness official tabletop RPG publishing partner who makes sure that we have all the vampire books and dice that we need. We'd like to thank Dogmite Games who crafted this beautiful storyteller screen for us. And we'd also like to thank Black Magic Design who have given us these cameras that help us come to you today in unliving color. Now as a prologue, I'd like us to think about the illusion of control. In the world of darkness, mortals have the courses of their lives altered, often unknowingly, by the selfish machinations of an invisible society of undead monsters. These lethal vampires declare themselves masters of this dark alley or that trendy nightclub. They claim dominion over stretches of the city that no one but their kind knows about. But their dominion stretches only as far as their undead powers and sometimes their masters say it does. In New York City, in the Camarilla for the kindred, the prince is the source of all power and authority, or at least on paper. But even her control is limited. It might be enough to resist the politicking of the primogen, but she too is still a monster, bound by the same hunger and the same supernatural limitations. Around us all, the ever-changing city manipulates everything as well through unpredictable collisions of lives and unlives, the chaotic interactions of millions struggling to get through the night in the very same teeming and haunted forests of brick, glass, and steel. With this very firmly in our minds, let's tell a vampire story. A few nights later, and we're back in Chelsea, that vibrant neighborhood on the west side of Manhattan that goes from night to day, back into night, 
through until the early hours of the morning and on until dawn without stopping. If we strayed a few blocks south, we'd be in the eclectic streets of Greenwich Village. If we walked a few blocks north, we'd be strolling through the storied and iconic streets of Midtown. To walk through Chelsea at night is to experience an overabundance of cultural, entertainment, dining, and social opportunities. Every street seems to boast some hot new art gallery or must-try restaurant, uh, the latest in the trendiest of new clubs, or an inviting bar. Many of these businesses don't last a year, and the competition for prominence among them is almost as fierce as the competition among vampires. Here, the newest styles and trends are always ready for purchase and ready to wear right off the rack or made to order in some boutique. And if this wasn't enough to recommend the neighborhood to those seeking the best that Manhattan has to offer, the western edge of the neighborhood skirts the Hudson River with many piers and riverside attractions inviting tourists and locals alike to enjoy the waterfront. There's almost too much happening in Chelsea at any one time for the eye to comprehend. And part of this, part of this beautiful nocturnal playground is now yours. Ten whole blocks, to be specific. A not inconsiderable slice of New York City belongs to you. But before we play in your new sandbox, let's take care of some vital housekeeping. Braun and Kiem, where are you at this time? Well, Braun is still pretty hurt. That fight in the pit, it was, it was closer than he would have liked it to be. To be honest, I thought that the vampire thing would help out with the healing, but it's it's just not as easy as I thought. It is very difficult to heal aggravated wounds. You can do it, of course. And the price for doing so is making not one, not two, but three rouse checks for every aggravated health level you want to heal. Ooh. And you're limited to one. Okay. So, if you want to try to take off a few of those, let's do it. All right. Come on, healing energy. Oh, I passed only one, so I get two hunger. Mm. Uh, the vampiric mending, of course, takes effect regardless, regardless of the effect of the roll. So you take away one aggravated damage. Yeah. Are you hunting with your preferred style? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, even though I am hurt, I feel on top of the fucking world, man. I gotta get out there, I gotta prove my strength. Do you hunt alone or do you associate with people? I asked uh, Coco to come with me, actually. Let's assume this happens the second night that you're trying to mend your dead flesh. Mm. How's that happening and where? I believe we are taking a stroll. What is your preferred way of hunting? Oh, you know, I like to sort of chase them down a little bit. Make them real scared. I can feel the adrenaline pump them through, get into an alley, feed a little bit. I feel better. Interesting. That's probably why you have a problem with restraint. I mean, it's just how I like it. Uh, you asked, but... Fair enough. I could use some cover, and you seem to be good at that sort of thing. Sure. Happy to help. How about you? Uh, would you want to partake at all? Oh, no. I have my own. Oh. Oh. What do you have? I have a bag of O positive. Yeah. A bag of blood. Is it disguised in any way, or is it? It's disguised in a Capri Sun. <laughs> okay. So, essentially, a juice box. Mm -hmm. And for all anyone knows, you're just enjoying a cool, refreshing drink. 
Oh, do you have to do that so loud? It's disgusting. No, no, thank you. Gets you by. Yeah, yeah. So you'll help me. I'll help you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Coco, you're going to do what? Provide lookout, cover, mm -hmm. yep. shadows? How will you assist? I am going to be the eyes around uh, Braun. If anything were to happen, I can step in and take care of the altercation as mm -hmm. Braun is able to feed. I see. Okay. And Braun, you prefer to chase down your prey mm -hmm. and take them forcefully. The alley cat style. Exactly. All right. Let's do this. To find prey, what I'm gonna do is find this prime alley, and uh, there's sort of the clientele that'll come through this area, very artsy, you know. They, mm -hmm. But they'll they'll be tripping out on something, some sort of drugs, uh, uh, alcohol, even or even love. Ugh. So we'll find this alleyway, and I'll soaring leap up to the uh, fire escape and wait until I see somebody that deserves my energy. Perched on the metallic skeletal structure of the fire escape, you loom over the alley like some gargoyle, <laughs> waiting for Coco's signal. Coco, you know what to look for. Mm -hmm. Make a wits and let's see. Let's make it streetwise for you. One, two, three, four successes. Four successes. That's my girl. Hmm. Spotting the appropriate individual, deftly making sure that they're guided into the alley. You leap. I leap. Strength and brawl. Yeah. Add two extra dice, thanks to Coco's help. This is the ideal vessel, and they are completely unaware. It's two. Okay. Oh. Five. 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 You make a perfect landing behind <sighs> And I would also like to activate Silence of Death. Once your feet touch the ground and you're hands are on them, you are silent, and draining their blood makes no noise. How much do you satisfy? How much of their delicious blood do you take? Two boxes. Mark it off. Now, we need to make one more rouse check. Piss. Now two more for the second aggravated damage. It's a total of three. Pass, pass. You are the luckiest Nosferatu in New York tonight. Yeah! You found something. Something that you did not expect. Oh. This blood feels, tastes, sentimental, wistful. They're awash in memories of things from their distant past. Regrets, triumphs, all the tiny fears and joys that make up a life. It's comforting and yet slothful. Whoever they are, they feel these emotions intensely, more intensely than the usual mortal that you drink from. Let's do a little quick blood math. You will begin the night having healed two aggravated damage, so you can mark that off your health. Thank you. You succeeded in the single rouse check, so you can mark off a point of superficial damage. Thank you. How many aggravated does that leave you on your health track? Still at two. Still at two. And now you are at one hunger. And I will slowly 
close the wound on the neck and take a bit of hair mm. as a present. Perhaps mimicking what you saw Kiem do to Lizzie. Monkey see, monkey do. One moment. I need to make a note. I have made a note. Mm. Coco, you are at one hunger after sipping on your delicious Capri Sun. Let's adjust our camera view then and find out where Kalita and Kiem are. Thanks for the assist. You're welcome. Where are you and what are you doing? Kalita and Kiem have been picked up by Wilcox and are on their way to what remains of the Frost Gallery. The Frosted Glass, the uh, <clears throat> unfortunate site of a previous altercation. Yes. Very well, you're in the town car moving through the Manhattan streets. It's busy, it's always busy. There's always traffic. It seems like every night there's a new construction project that forces you to take a different route, but at least it gives you time to talk. Why do we have to go back to the place we pretty much destroyed? I mean, the area's ours now. Right. So, and second being, kind of have to get used to cleaning up messes. We can't just leave it? Unfortunately not. That is a big part of our job, and aren't you curious at all? Maybe there's something there that we missed? I guess I don't generally return to the scene of a incident. Yeah, you do seem to be the fleeing type. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I don't mean to be nosy, but I did hear Rafferty say that he wasn't able to locate your sire. Yes. It was news to me that sires stick around with their kindred they make. I didn't have that experience. His How did you meet? Well... Uh, let's see. Accidentally? Uh, suddenly? Where? I was supposed to take care of him for someone else. When I was still human, and... The mission changed pretty quickly. And I turned into this. And his name was Amadeus, my sire. Amadeus. And I came here. And I'm, to be honest, new to New York. I know a bit about our kind. But not, not as much as you all seem to know. So Where are you annoying. from? Sorry? Where are you from? Doesn't matter, I'm here now. Okay. But you, you and your sire are quite close. I would say so. Um, Rafferty and I, prior to meeting, ran in similar social circles, you can say. There was a charity auction one night and introduced myself. And I let him know that I was an art dealer. And it just so happens that he was looking for something special. And it just so happens that I had acquired a very rare Rothko painting. It's very beautiful. You might see it sometime. It's black, with color blocks of deep red, but if you look really closely, it's a very thin line of bright crimson. I just also so happened to have the provenance for it and he was very interested in having something that nobody else could have. Hmm. So I suppose the common thread is someone finds a human 
decides they want to keep them, and then we are made. I suppose Rafferty has acquired children like he's acquired paintings. I don't suppose it's usual for the sire to just disappear? I've heard varying stories. I think my situation is probably more on the rare side. Hmm. Seems like everyone, though, in our new little coterie, knows their sires, talks to them. I've been looking for mine. I've been looking. But whether I find him or not, doesn't matter. We're here now. We are peers, I suppose, and maybe one day we won't be again. We are all alone. You don't have to be. I think people who follow the rules that are set out to protect us generally end up in better social situations. I don't know much about this, even about what we're doing. I, I called Rafferty's the last sort of hope to know what was going on with Amadeus. I was left a note that just said, call him if I need help. So once he disappeared, I just, I don't know. I think I was looking for something, some kind of group, something to do, a mission. I don't know if this is it though. So you're seeking a purpose. Well, yours seems to be here. In this social situation, there's always one more rung on the ladder to climb. And so my job's never done. But why the Camarilla? Why not the Anarchs? <laughs> what could I possibly gain from being an Anarch? I don't know. It's an oxymoron, first of all, to have somebody be called a baron, you know, a title of lordship in a feudal society when they don't even believe in having hierarchies. And yet they do, and it all just seems a little confusing to me that they have this idea of like, oh, we're so free, but they have their own set of rules. It's all the same shit. So why not be on a more advantageous side? Truly we are, I believe, blessed to have been turned, but I did imagine this life being a little more free. We are all so powerful, different than we used to be, and yet we can or we can't show it at different times. We, there's rules, there's towers. Were we ever really free in our mortal life? Absolutely we're not. <laughs> same rules, possibly by a different name, same social structures. But why can't it be different? You're sounding a little too much like an anarch for me. I'm sorry, this is making me uncomfortable. But I'm sorry. You're allowed to feel how you want to feel. I'm just exploring every possibility. I don't listen to what I'm told all the time, like some people. Be careful. As you approach the frosted glass gallery, Wilcox has to move around some sort of impediment <clears throat> in the street. Looks like there's a, a bike messenger who's just collided with a pedestrian and the pedestrian is shouting bloody murder and the whole situation may escalate into a brawl just outside your gallery. He decides to park a little bit further down the street to avoid it. That's New York for you. This gonna be okay? Should I wait? We can walk. I can walk. We can walk. All right, uh, keep the car here. Yes, please. You got Just it. Hey, I can see. Uh, I can see Mr. Braun. He points to his rearview mirror, and he's. Uh, if you turn your heads, you can see Braun and Coco, whom he did not mention, walking up the sidewalk towards the gallery. Oh, good. Oh wow, that is creepy. He looks in the rearview mirror again and looks behind him. Wow. Hey, watch her tongue. She's one of us. Well, I mean, usually she sits on the other side, so I don't. 
Leave it. Yes, ma'am. Shall we? <sighs> yes, it's too stuffy in here. Back at the frosted glass, the uh, scene of your first assignment for Mr. Rafferty, your patron, the storefront window that you shattered. The first time you were here has been replaced, and it's once again that strange glass that is frosted in such a way that it's opaque when you look at it from any angle, but transparent when you look straight through it into the gallery. Carabo is the only individual inside at this time. He's wearing a long drapery of soft gray material wrapped around himself in a very flowing fashion. Ah, Miss Kalita, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, the rescue. Um, the insurance should cover uh, the rest of the damages. He looks a little less enthused to see the rest of you. Just wanted to come by and make sure everything was all right. Well, as you can see, we are busy restoring everything. Uh, the water damage, I'm afraid, is going to be very expensive. Um, and insurance only goes so far since the nature of the problem of the uh, <clears throat> altercation isn't something that we could explain easily. Um, but I told them about that, uh, the, those visiting thugs from the Bronx and uh, what they did to mm. my beautiful gallery. I can't, I can't even talk about it, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't speak about the details. It's, it, it hurts too much. It's probably for the best. Just, we don't need to talk about it. All the walls in the gallery are now bare, except for that big chunk of cement. This one was pretty good, though. Ah, yes, yes, this is an original serif. In fact, uh, let me show you. Um, uh, he races to his office and comes back very quickly with a, a tablet. And uh, he shows you, look, it's an art blog. Color photograph, the top head of the blog article, shows another piece of concrete. And judging from the objects in the image, the scale of it is quite large. It must be a good 10, 12 feet across, enormous. It's laying in a, what looks like a patch of earth. According to the article, this was a new piece of art, another original serif discovered recently in the Bronx. Evidently, the serif is famous in the tagging subculture of New York City. Now, graffiti is a part and parcel of the landscape in most metropolitan areas, but here in New York, it can be elevated, according to some, to an art form. And this particular piece is definitely art. It's uh, a large golden sun painted with a technique that you're not familiar with, Kalita, despite your skill and education in the uh, painting arts. Mm. At each point of radiance around the body of the sun, the rays, as it were, there is what looks like a bloody palm print, almost as though someone has dipped a hand in fresh blood and made impressions around the sun emblem. Uh, Carabo, can you zoom in on that? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, of course. He, he pinches the screen and holds it up for you. Hmm. Does this mean something to you? Doesn't mean th I don't understand it. I'll it's beautiful, though. Cute. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try. I've sent some people out to see if it's, it was just laying in a vacant lot. Is, it, uh, is there like a little tagline caption that says what uh, medium she's using? Um, it says spray paint. Mm -hmm. Although... The handprints don't look like spray paint to me. I think somebody actually dipped their hands in paint and made those symbols. If you art folk could figure out what exact red would that be, well, how would you relate it to? You think it's a, a hmm. crimson red, a looks like blood. scarlet red, blood oh, red. Oh yes, it, it's, it's, it does look like blood. For, look, it's, it's remarkable. But not fresh, like if it dried and mm -hmm. it's like a little brown tint to it. Well, you already own an original serif, of course, since you bought <laughs> everything. I'm very grateful. Um, very grateful indeed. So I'm going to try to get this one. 
Um, I'm not really familiar with the rules of found art like that. Uh, is it finders keepers? I'm not sure. I always say so. No, but I have a feeling the loser's gonna weep soon. I don't really know how to get it out of there. It's huge. I may need a truck, but hmm. um, but I'll do my best to acquire it. It would make would uh, uh, an amazing centerpiece for the gallery. I'd be very interested in seeing it up close. Uh, you're not here to... Um, Can I help you? Are, you? are you quite all right? You look like you might be feeling a little unwell. I feel fine. Thank you for asking. I am restraining myself. He looks like how he looks like, and you shouldn't comment. It's rude. I apologize. Sorry. I also have felt better. I'm going to step close to Carabo, mm. and I'd actually like to um, just touch the screen real quick. Make a technology roll. <laughs> Touch it. I've got nothing to roll with. <laughs> roll a single die. Oh, success! The screen visibly glitches, and the device, the tablet, makes a sound not normally associated with electronic devices, but the picture resolves and restores itself. Well, I don't know what happened. This thing is new. Me either. That's it's, interesting. Can he, I see it again? He shakes it a bit like it's, like it's an etch-a-sketch. <laughs> I don't think that's how you're supposed to do that. Here, let well, me see you, it. No, you're clearly, you've got some sort of static electricity problem. I'm... Oh, just let me see it. He hands it over reluctantly. Grab you it grab again. grab it? Yep. Make another roll. Fail. It emits that strange, high-pitched whine again. Oh, you should and probably try to go fix this. And screen goes blank. Ah! Oh, you know, those aren't cheap. I understand. What did you do? I I guess you were right. I have some sort of static electricity. I must have rubbed up on something. Here, maybe I can reboot it. Would you excuse us for a moment? Sure, sure. Can I have it back? Yes, here you go. Oh, God. Oh. He uh, steps into his office and shuts the door behind him. Through the small glass window of his office wall, you can see him frantically trying to reboot the tablet. That was a distraction. Don't even try to get on my case about that. The man just lost his entire freaking gallery. Could you not break a phone or a tablet or something for one freaking night? He was on Brawn, and so I created a diversion. I'm sorry that that was out of your plan. We're in an art gallery with an entire community that does pour, will pour paint on themselves of a performance piece. He, that's his artistic expression. Easy and easy peasy. You don't have to sit there and break every little electronic device that comes into your contact. Oh, I'm sorry that you can touch cell phones and be able to conduct your own fucking business, but I can't do that. Hey, hey. Have you looked into like those little gloves that you could still like swipe on your phones with? Does that work? No, it doesn't. Well, mm -hmm. then figure something else out. I like when they fight. Uh, thank you, Coco. I, I appreciate what you did. You're welcome. And Kalita, go easy on that. It was for me. I like a little chaos. It's fine, Coco. Oh, speaking of which, I got you a present. <gasps> and I'll pull out that hair of the victim. I was wondering why you did uh, that. He hands over uh, strands of human hair. Aww. Yeah, when I was uh, feeding on this one, it felt funny. You know, like I got, uh, what's it called when you feel things but on the inside and it's like it stirs up some... Emotion? That's it. Mm. Huh. And it doesn't normally happen like that when I feed. Really? Hmm. It was like, bam! Okay, what, what are you doing with that? You're making a doll? That. I just like to collect bits. Why? It makes me feel nice. You look like the character on Dexter. I bet she's a serial killer, yeah. That's some I don't know what you're up shit. Technically, we're all serial killers, right? You uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good no. point. No. No. Mm-mm. It's called. Disgracia. No. Lizzie? Everyone heard that, right? Lizzie isn't there, and then she is. She simply appears from a corner of the gallery. Ah! I'm going to hide Christ, behind Lizzie. Coco. Whatever she was wearing was once a beautiful piece of couture clothing, and now is completely shredded into rags. Disgracia. 
What's he call me? It's called a disgracia. Oh. Sometimes they feel really deeply, really strongly, and it sticks in their blood and you can taste it. And it does things. Like, like things that you do? I can't. Uh, no hard feelings about the big guy, right? I mean, it was a fair fight. Richter I says I can't kill you. Thank God we have Richter. Rules oh. are rules. You didn't do anything wrong. What, why are you afraid of Lizzie? Because she does stuff to your mind, and she, I don't have a lot of mind to control. I'll do stuff to her if she hurts you. Thanks. To be honest, I'm not up to 100% yet, so... We're not doing anything to anybody right now. Yeah! I guess if everyone keeps their promises, we'll be okay, isn't that right, Lizzie? Oh, speaking of promises, Relax. um, I hand you my purse. Just mm -hmm. open it. What's inside? It's a brand new cell phone with also a wad of cash of, that I owed her. Oh, look. Amazing. You actually had money to buy these things. Yeah. I do. So you're not poor. Okay. Here's your purse back. Thanks. Just let it drop on the ground. <sighs> so Lizzie, what brings you here? Well... You ruined my paintings. I came back to see if there was anything left. I thought you were gonna give up the painting habit. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look like it. A uh, question for you. Are you actually allowed here right now? What do you mean? You're well, on our territory, yeah. our turf, as you call it, correct? Mm-hmm. We kind of came to this agreement where you had to make a formal request to make a visit. Oh, right. Um, I mean, you didn't even knock just now. Mother, may I please visit your gallery? Ooh, she called yes, you mother. Yes, may. Isn't that much better? Not really, no. Mm, too bad. We agreed on it. We did. You have my number. You took my hair. I still have it. Yeah, so I wouldn't expect any, you know, text messages. Uh, you know, Lizzie, if you did want to paint more, and if you did want a place to display, we could talk about my gallery. I'm listening. See, earlier you had said that you weren't in it for the money, correct? That's right. You want to be seen, don't you? You want your art. I just want to share it. To be shared and appreciated, correct? Yeah. My gallery is much more private than this, so I could assure you that one, nothing would become of your paintings that you didn't agree upon. And two, and this is the part that I really like, my clientele are the best of the best. I'm a bit of a taste maker, you see. What and do so, I have to do? Hmm. Well, you can share some of your secrets. And we can talk about that later. I don't know. I feel like But you... your paintings would be seen by the most important people and you will immediately gain the notoriety that I feel you secretly deeply want. I feel like she sort of told us how she does her stuff. The... Disgracia? Disgracia? Oh, I think that's when I felt the blood. I know, but I think she's using blood to paint. Ah. Uh, yes. Like that handprint? Similar. What seems... handprint? Seems... That was Seraph's. Yeah, it seems that maybe oh, a compatriot. Oh, you know her too. Mm. I haven't met her formally. Oh, I know Seraph. But 
She's Maybe. coming to the club. She hangs out at the cage. How well do you know her? I mean, we're not friends. Mm. But I know her, know her. You know, if we could share. That's one of hers right there. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. We she's, can share a little bit of the technique, perhaps. She's, uh, well, I don't know how she does stuff. As far as I know, she just sprays things. Mm. She's, uh, she's cool. I bet. She, uh, she went on a date with Francis. Oh. Yeah, they did a I guess you could say it was a spray date. <laughs> Where would we see this lovely work of art now? Uh, I, I think they made it in some place in the Bronx. I don't know. Mm. I didn't get close enough to watch them make it. I was afraid Francis would see me. But you followed them. Yeah. You like doing that. Well, you find out a lot of useful things. Like... Seraph painting. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were here earlier tonight, or at least he was. Really? Yeah, he was all casual like. Did he say anything of importance? He didn't see me. Could you gauge what he was trying to siphon out? I think he was checking this place out too to see. Okay. If I wanted to. What would change your mind and alter it so that you would want to do it? Well, I like this gallery thing idea. Okay. I think we could come to some sort of agreement. And no more hair stuff! I said I have enough. For what? For me. Is she a witch? She's a witch, right? Could be. Did you come alone, Lizzie? It's well, very brave. I mean, yes and no. I'm here by myself, but... But what? Mario is somewhere in the city. Uh -huh. Oh. Hmm. I think he's in the park. The big park. The <laughs> central park. We're gonna meet up later when it's time to go home. Hmm. Lizzie, I'm gonna give you my card. Okay. And so now I have can... two cards. Hmm. And then we can talk further about that agreement. If I follow this person, this vampire, the blonde lick, mm -hmm. I tell you. Yes. Everything. And in fact, if you give us good information, or you give me good information, I'll owe you something. Oh, can we do a boon? Sure. Sweet. Okay, I agree. I do have an additional proposition for you if you'd like another boon from me. It's not a catch, is it? Negative. Okay. I'm interested in finding out more about what you said about me. What I said. It's okay. I'd now like to I point you I mean. in the direction of something to see if you get an idea or a dream or a premonition again about it. I only know what I saw. I never remember what I say. I have a good memory of things. But yours was all like, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. Yeah. Are you pirate? Not that I'm fully aware of at the moment. I own a shipping company. See? She's good. Is it true about... Are you like Julia? I am. So you know Julia? Yeah, she's really nosy. She works for the sheriff. We don't like her. She does. She seems to be pretty good at her job, so that would be a reason why you don't like her. Richter says that 
can't trust you. Why would you trust anyone in the first place? Okay, fair. But if we do this boon thing, maybe we can trust you. Then get it done and we'll see. So Lizzie, you saw, when you looked at the eyes of my compatriots here, you saw their past, a bit of their future, a bit of their present? I don't know what it means. I just see stuff. I said no to you before, but I'm looking for someone. Maybe you could help if you read me or whatever it is you're doing. But I need three of you to keep your mouths shut. Sometimes I can see things that people want. You want me to try? Sure. What do I get? Well, you're not getting your hair back. That's mine. Uh, I will... I'll tell you what I want. Fine. What? I want a new dress. Do Done. You Pick it out. Make it a nice one. And you'll take care of it after? No, I'll do it now, if you want. You're not a La Sombra, I'll trust you. Sort of. Do you want a pre-shredded dress, or do you like doing that by yourself? No, I'll take care of it. Fine. I'll have something delivered to the cage for you. Okay. Think about what you want. Think about who you want. Close your eyes. Think. Do you see him? Or her? Or them? Yes. Okay, now open your eyes. Lizzie pulls her long, straggly hair away from her face so that she can see both of her eyes and she can see yours. Bright lights, big city. Round and round the wheel of fortune goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. The little steel ball bounces. Number to number. Blood to blood. Wheel stops on red. What I say? <sighs> Some thing about seeing red. Something about seeing red. That's never good when I see red. Ooh. That's never, never good. I saw red once for uh, one of Torque's gang, and you know she was a mess afterward. <sighs> but the wheel stops on red. Like yeah, it was like one of those spinny wheels with Real a little light. steel ball. Bright light city. Las Vegas. Aren't there bright lights in every big city? It's true. Not yeah, like but that's the lyrics of the Elvis song. I don't know oh, what you're talking like about. I understand what it means. It just... It's fine. Are you happy now? I wouldn't use the word happy. See, you can get what you said you wanted and still not be happy. You're right about that. <sighs> Make it a nice dress. I'll get you a nice dress. I have to go meet Mario. Before you do, let's make sure that we set some conditions here. I did say that you were going to bring this information, but I'm not going to allow you to dictate when that information gets here. <sighs> you guys are all about rules. Absolutely, yeah. it's mm -hmm. what keeps us safe. Looks like it. Okay, what do you want? I want it in two it? nights' time. Wow. What if I can't find him in two nights? Make it happen. That means I can come back. Because yes. I have to come back to look, right? Correct. Mother, may I? Yes, you may. Okay. And the way you'll contact me is that I will wait for you by the docks by a green light that indicates the end of a pier. 
this in a book once. Okay, two knights. Peer near here. Green light. I'll owe you a boon. Worth it. Good night. Hey. Good night. She, instead of attempting to vanish before your eyes, simply uses the front door. Carabo comes racing out of his office. Is she gone? Yeah. Oh, God. She gives me the creeps. I'm right there with you. That was Lizzie, right? Yeah. The artist. I don't think we'll, I mean, unless you, I don't know. Should we exhibit her again? You know, I think you've had enough excitement dealing with her. True. I couldn't get this thing to work again. It's totally dead. I don't, that's really, the static is, I mean, you got to do something about that. I will work on it. Um. Mr. Braun, I apologize again for my <clears throat> earlier behavior. I have no excuse. Yeah, you said some shitty things. You should feel bad about it. I do. Yeah. I do feel bad about it. You know what? Restraint has worked out. That is very sweet to hear. Hmm. Any special instructions as we complete our restoration? Yes. If you see a gentleman come by to look at the, what was he was looking at that serif one? Yes. Yeah. Blonde hair? Blonde hair. Blonde hair. Blonde hair gentleman. Oh, Mr. Argus, yes, of Argus. course. Yeah. If you see him around again, let me know. I believe he was here the the night of our uh, special event. Yeah. Has Did he you talk to him? Yeah. Talk, uh, it... Has he frequent this uh, establishment often? Um, I mean, not that I recollect so often, occasionally, but ever since we hung the Seraph, he and, um, I believe Seraph's mother, who you met also that night, mm -hmm. um, Was have he here come tonight? by frequently to look at it. Hmm? Was he here tonight? I didn't see him. No, did. Hmm. But um, I have... You have his daughter's painting here. Surely you have her um, contact information. Um, no, um, Seraph doesn't I contact. She's she's really big in the tagging world, so mm -hmm. it's sort of like um, you're lucky to find one. Um, it's kind of like um, like that fellow Banksy. Mm -hmm. They just show up, but usually in the Bronx. How does one recognize a Seraph? Well, I mean, look at it. Look at the brush strokes, the colors. That's no ordinary spray paint. That's, this is a masterpiece. This says something about the juxtaposition of you know, urban decay versus hope and renewal. Uh, there's a whole subtext here that seems pedantic. Um, seems boring. Well, I mean, to the untrained eye, perhaps. Seems like it's spray that you bought at Walmart or something. Well, I, I presume it's ordinary spray paint, but what's done with it. I mean, really, I mean, aren't the, the building blocks of art perfectly ordinary? The pigment in the tubes, the block of marble, the, um, I mean, the yarn. All you have those... a fascinating worldview. But I should stop talking about it now? Possibly. Mm. Excuse me. Right, okay. So yes, um, if he comes by, what, call you? Just let me know. I will. And what about, um, you know, there's a, an entire basement floor we're not using. Is there? I thought about turning it into something, I don't know, a cocktail bar or um, second gallery space. Um, hmm. Let me know what you think. Can, okay. can do that. Are there sure. separate exits from the basement, or is it all one entrance and exit here? Oh, good question. Um, actually, there is a separate entrance. Uh, you know what New York is like. It's it's pretty much a, a vertical maze. Absolutely. Yeah, the entrance opens out into the parking lot. Why don't you rent it out to us then? Well, I mean, I don't think I can rent it out to the gallery owner. All right. 
But we can decide on what we want to do with it. Great. Uh, just don't ever go down there again. It's ours. Okay. Yeah. I'll stay out of it. Good. And I don't really want to know anything about it, do I? No. Nope. Not at all. Do you want to take a look? Yeah. Let's go. He shows you the back of the gallery where the storage area is, where paintings are stored, packed, unpacked, in large wooden crates to protect them. Past the door to the restrooms, there's another door that he unlocks for you and opens, stepping away since he is no longer wanted downstairs. It's an ordinary flight of stairs that takes you down to a very simple, long, narrow room that runs the length of the gallery above. There's a cement floor, a few bare electric lights, a couple of support poles. It's made out of brick like the rest of the building, and a separate entrance, or exit in this case, that leads to the parking lot where you met mm. Argus. Hey, this is not too shabby, especially for like daylight hours. And I'll knock on the bricks. Seems pretty solid. It's very solid construction. Uh, you know, it's not going to fall over anytime soon. Safe house? Yeah, yeah, safe house. Do you not have anywhere to stay? No, I do. I, it's just... Where do you stay? Oh, you know, down by the, the ferry. Hmm. Like in the ferry? In a ferry? You know, back and forth. If you need a place, we could make this more... I'm good. I don't need a place. I got a place. I'm just saying this is a pretty good place to stay during the day. Right. Well, why don't we just make this a separate comfy place should you need I don't it need comfort. Okay? We need an arsenal. We need to be a functioning team. Right? I didn't say there wasn't going to be any weapons. Agreed. It'd be good to have something a little closer by. Mm -hmm. hmm. So we're going to make this our own? Well... Let's look at it this way, then. You're now a coterie in all senses of the word. Coteries are entitled to benefits in the world of darkness. There are resources that each of you can bring to bear in setting up a safe house. Since you work for a patron, will say that you have become a marischal type of coterie and that will come with certain points and privileges that we will sort out together. It makes your territory, these 10 blocks of Chelsea, from here to the waterfront, including what's on the waterfront, whatever is in it, whoever is in it, at least in the eyes of the Camarilla, belongs to you. How far are the docks from here? Perhaps 20 minutes walk or five minutes by a car if the traffic is good. Speaking of your patron, you receive a call from Rafferty. Hello. Ah, Kalita, darling. How are things going? Uh, I'd say they're going splendidly. Enjoying your little tour? Yeah, it's so far so good. This is a lovely area. I thought you might like it. It has a little bit of everything, something for everyone. It does, doesn't it? Did you find anything to your taste? Well, uh, currently we are exploring the gallery that we were at a few nights ago. As far as we can tell, everything is fine. Good. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but look, um, I'd like you to do something for me. You recall those um, souvenirs from the gallery? Yes. Are you referring to the scrap of... Uh, yes, the souvenirs. Yes. I mentioned that I know someone who would take a look at those for us and give us a little bit more detail. Did you find anything? Well, not me, but... Um, I'd like you to, I'd like you to go meet someone tonight. And 
all of your associates as well. Send I'd rather details. not say precisely who, but I'll give you an address. Okay. Sounds lovely. It's at the Cloisters. Where's that? Hmm. Well, it's still here in Manhattan, so don't panic. But oh God, it's you. far to the north of the island. Very, very northwest. Uh, it's a museum. I think you'll find it interesting. Oh. And she'll, are they waiting for us? How will I know who She'll be there they're... soon. Oh, you, you will know, you'll know them. Okay. They're expecting you. Perfect. So, if you wouldn't mind, wrap up whatever business that you and your associates are up to at the moment, and uh, pay a call on my friend. Will do. I look forward to meeting whoever it is we're about to meet. I'll be very interested to know what you think of them. Oh, and uh, has Braun behaved himself? Very well, showing a lot of restraint. Good. I'm glad to hear it. From what I heard, he really did a number on one of Richter's people at the pit. He sure did. Richter was impressed. I was rather proud of him. Richter actually asked me if uh, Braun was available for freelance. Mm. I said no. Yeah, why would you have him do any favors for them at this point? Braun is a weapon, and I don't intend that anybody else but us should wield him. Yeah, I don't like to share. Well, I need to go. Okay, we'll wrap things up and head over. Ciao. Ciao. We're well, gonna meet somebody. Was that Father Dearest? It was Daddy Dearest. Mm. Are we gonna meet someone? Or are we gonna meet someone? We're not meeting somebody. Okay. We're we're going to a museum. Oh. They're expecting us. Oh. And that's kind of all I know. Now? Yeah, now. Oh, yeah, now. Okay, Wrap okay, this right. up now. Yeah. Another wow. errand. Mysterious meeting at a museum with an unnamed individual. That seems like an ideal place to pause our vampire story for now. Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, New York by Night, Season 2, Episode 4, All the Mystery. We think of Manhattan as nothing but skyscrapers and high-rise residences huge buildings bisected by Central Park. And that is not untrue, but that is not all that Manhattan is. At the very northwest corner of Manhattan is a place that, for those who know about it, consider it one of the most beautiful locations in the city, perhaps because its appearance is so improbable. From a certain stretch of the Hudson River that it overlooks, it resembles nothing so much as a small medieval castle, complete with stone walls and towers. It is the Cloisters Museum and Gardens, a branch of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, dedicated to the architecture, artifacts, and culture of the Middle Ages, the medieval period. It's located in the middle of tiny Fort Tryon Park in Upper Manhattan. It was opened in 1938, and the architect who designed it constructed it from elements of five different monasteries that he disassembled and brought back over the sea from France. At night, it is, of course, closed and deserted, except for its hired security detail Fortunately, you are expected, and you are shown wordlessly through the gardens, through corridors, past archways, into a small, windowless stone room hung with tapestries from the 14th century. The tapestries depict some long-lost battle 
between soldiers and kings. And here you find an individual waiting for you. Even fledglings have heard of the regent of the high chantry. Even fledglings know the name Ashling Sturbridge. So is this the place we're supposed to be at? This was the address I was given. Well, there's... Oh shit, okay, all right, everybody, look cool. <clears throat> I think that's who we're supposed to meet. They're right, expecting yeah. us, so it's okay. You don't have to, it's, don't be nervous. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not nervous. Well, you're the mouthpiece, you're up. Good evening. Evening. Well, my name's Kalita. I know. So, no introductions necessary. We can get to, to business with the... Thing. I like hearing others say their own names, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm Kian. I'm Derek. Uh, Braun. I go by Braun. Hey, my real name is Derek. Nobody asked. Sorry. You're doing fine. Thanks. I am Consuela Elena Romona Confrisi, but you can call me Coco. Hmm. So young, each of you. So new. How does it feel? Pretty shitty, if I'm gonna be honest. Why do you say that? Well, I mean, now I gotta cover up half of my face and some gross disfigurement and... Uh, I am stronger now, so th thanks for that, but I don't mean to disrespect the Camarilla. I, I'm talking too much. We can't all be Clan Tremere now, can we? No. So, you were sent by your sire, Kate. Yes, Rafferty. 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 Did he tell you anything of me? Only that we were to be expected. Nothing about my position, the respect it is due. Well, well. we know who you are. Should we, I bow? We didn't know we were going to meet you today. Could bow. It's not necessary, strictly speaking. But I don't mind it. Well, we understand you're the regent of the Chantry. It's a high and honored position. High regent, but yeah, close enough. Someone such as yourself doesn't need an introduction. You simply need to walk into the room. I like this one. Tell me more. What have you come to me with? I was told I would be repaying some boon. Oh yeah, yeah, the paintings were fucky. The what explain. was what? Well, yeah, uh, there was a breach in the masquerade, and we, being the arm of the Camarilla, went and conquered and returned with proof there of the deception. By fucky, he means that these paintings that they were presenting to the mortal world were enchanting people. There were three of them. They were hypnot hypnotos. Hypnotism? That word. Hypnotism. Something that you're... Let's take a step backwards. You think you're the arm of the Camarilla? Oh, I didn't mean that. I meant the nail on the pinky of the Camarilla arm hand. We are newly employed by the Camarilla to, to serve and do our duty mm -hmm. as young kindred. Who told you you have a duty to serve? Um, no. We work under Rafferty, and I decided who I was going to work for. That's why I am here. I can't speak for everyone. We have been placed on certain assignments. 
Our assignments have been successful. And in exchange for performing these assignments, what do you get? Territory. There was that. And we expect a certain level of protection that comes in working for the Camarilla. Did, did we do something wrong? No, I like you. Why do you ask? No, I just, I can't get a read on you. A am I the only one? Uh, I can't. No, she's sizing us up. She wants to know if we're worth the information that she could possibly give us. I'm simply here to return a boon. But I like to know who's on the board. Hmm. These you... pieces of canvas, did you bring them? I did, yes. Would well, I like to see them? That's why I'm here. So, Kalita, you're going to hand the scraps you got back from Rafferty over to Ashling? Yes. Okay. They are pieces of canvas, only a few inches in size. They've clearly been torn, ripped, shredded from a larger work of art. They're covered in some water-stained pigment, probably oil paint. Many different colors. It's impossible to say what the entire piece of art would have looked like. It's like trying to discern the entire picture of a jigsaw puzzle just from one or two pieces. There's also a graffiti artist that has been making these large canvases, well, not canvases, it's not canvas, but... Concrete. Concrete, yes. The handprints look like they might contain blood. I may need you to show those to me at some point, but for now, let's focus on the task at hand. These three pieces, would you set them on the ground there? Um, I don't take them from you. I, mm. Ashling doesn't like to touch things. I can see by the gloves as I set them down. One by one. Place them on the floor of the room. Careful when you're looking at them, that's when it gets you. In the brain. Thank you for the pro tip. How did you come by these pieces? Well, my sire had requested that we go inspect some unusual activity at this gallery where they were all on display. A vigilant childer you are. Let me take a look. Ashling removes one glove, pulls a safety pen from one pocket, mm -hmm. pricks her finger, and drops three drops of blood <clears throat> onto one of them. The blood moves of its own accord. It's like watching mercury swirl and glass. Three drops race around the surface of the canvas, chasing one another until they gather in the very, very center. The droplets seem to be absorbed into the small scraplet, and the entire piece of canvas is suddenly suffused a crimson color, obscuring the original pigmentation. And then, it simply crumbles into very, very, very small particles. Ooh. But, that's what you thought it was. Your information was correct, Coco. This canvas was enchanted with blood sorcery. It allows the artist to imbue a strong emotion of their choosing into the artwork to be felt by all who view it and are susceptible, of course. Like Disgracia. Whom? 
Well, it's something I just experience, you know, when a mortal's vitae is so overcome with emotion that, that you get the back taste. Precisely. Yeah. But even kind would react to this. Mm. Well. This sort of blood magic is only available to Clan Tremere. I'm very curious who the artist may have been. Well, if we give you that information, what does that do for us? Now you're playing the game. Happy to give you the information if uh, you do me a favor. I'll let you hold on to your information for now, for my boons are not easily won. And in that regard, there's more I'd like to know about your sire. Do you trust him, James Rafferty? I do. He's been more than kind to me. And so far, he's been good to his word. Excellent. Are you too well acquainted? I would not use the word well. We are acquainted. He has his strengths. How is it that you became indebted to Rafferty then? Oh, a trivial matter. Do not bother yourself with it, for now it is repaid. Must not have been trivial since you said your shit's worth some gold. But I'm not here, just respectfully watching. Liam, your sire, do you do their bidding in this same manner? No. No, my sire is gone. Gone? Perhaps lost. Disappeared. We have much in common. So, when you were left by your sire, how did you decide who to join with? Well, Clan Tremere is a bit more insular than some others, as you may have noticed. It was easy. All of them had to welcome me in in order for me to even be embraced, so I had a home. How are you finding your experience? Uh, well, now I'm surrounded by some compatriots, I suppose. We are a coterie of sorts. But Rafferty organized us together, so it's no choice of mine, but I'm finding out more about the Camry every day. Aren't we all? <sighs> so the thing you did with the painting, is it gone now? Or did you learn anything? Or... The particular blood magic placed upon it? Yes. Who created it? That remains yet to be learned. Is there anything else, Jason, that we learn from mm. these scraps? You uh, <clears throat> have a rather significant dice pool. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Not even sure why I bothered. <clears throat> Two more facts. You were correct. The blood sorcery is normally available only to Clan Tremere, but it's a power that has fallen out of use possibly because of the calamities that has, have befallen your clan in recent decades. You know of no one 
in New York City who possesses this particular ability. That means possibly the painter is a Tremere or someone's been naughty. The second piece of information that you get from the scraps of canvas is that the power in them can be reconstituted. Those scraps, if treated properly, can produce the same effect as the whole painting, temporarily. Like little magic art grenades. You're new. Yeah. But I sense something in each of you. You ask good questions. And that's the beginning of understanding the complicated power structure you stand on the outskirts of. I'd like you to take these two pieces. You might have use for them in the right situations. How do you mean? Did you look upon the painting they were taken from? Yeah. I didn't take a close look, but Braun did. Braun, what did you feel? It was like a wave of nice. I was entranced. I wanted to stare at it more. It stirred up an emotion in me. I too saw it, but... The emotion I felt was outrage, so I destroyed it. And that's what freed me. The emotion it causes is an elevated version of some part of what's already within you. You may have need to cause that upon another. One that crosses your coterie, or one that simply you wish to gain favor with. But if they are Tremere, they may know what you're doing, so tread carefully in that regard. Do you think that those artists, was that their own blood? Is it them that we need to speak further with? Well, when working with blood magic, you need the most powerful blood within reach. Depends on the kindred. But often I find mine is the most powerful within my reach. I want to instill further in you the need to question, especially those that give you orders. Wait, what? Well, I thought you were from the Camarilla. Why? Oh, I'm not speaking against the Camarilla. I just mean. No. Who you're taking orders from. And maybe assume they may have motives aside from those they're expressing clearly. Are you speaking from experience? All I have is experience. Specifically with Mr. Rafferty. Rafferty. Hmm. He's one that knows how to take care of himself. And only himself. But that can be said of many kindred, can't it? <laughs> Being self-serving is not something surprising around here. Good. So how, so how did you rise to power then? Self-serving and ordering coteries around, like Rafferty is? Hard work. Seeing what's coming from a distance. Knowing why everyone chooses 
to do the things that they do, and in that way, knowing what they may do next. Hmm. And what do you see happening to Rafferty from the distance? Hmm. Nothing much. More of the same. Hmm. Seems like Daddy's not perfect after all. No one's perfect. Well, he's pretty close. What do you know about the Anarchs? Which Anarchs? Well, I mean, we went to a club and we saw that Richter seemed to be sort of like the boss over there, but we'd heard that this person, Torque, might be in charge. It's very confusing. There can only be one person in charge. That's what I would think. There is a discreet knock on the door of the room. An individual sticks his head in carefully. You can only see him from about the neck up. He has very, very shaggy, dark hair, deep set eyes, prominent features. He looks apologetic. It is your associate and servant, Agathon. I'm sorry, High Regent. I'm sorry to intrude, but you asked to be told when it was time. Thank you, Agathon. Everything's ready. We can go whenever you like. In a moment. I'll be just outside. He excuses himself and closes the door behind him. One last thing. Rafferty sees something in, in you as well. That's why he's placed you together. If you're so inclined, perhaps you could return a favor from a grateful Tremere? What would that be? I refer to myself. There's something that you could do for me if you're in the business of doing favors. I'm listening. Well, I'm not quite ready to set this plan in motion. Perhaps I could contact you at a later time. You could have my card. And my call card me as well. anytime. There are a lot of cards being exchanged. Uh, I do not take them. Mm. <laughs> right. Uh, and I Down gesture to Ag Agathon. Yeah. Uh, He'll be. Agathon has returned to the room, collects the business cards. Tucks them away. Um, I follow you? after him. Or I let him walk behind me as right. I lead the way out. I do Wait. call out, do you want that name? I stop without turning. And location. What do you ask in return? That I get an evening with you one night. Agathon looks like someone has just kicked him in the thigh. And he almost cringes, waiting for the response. Granted. Now he looks astonished. Lizzie, the Bronx, a place called the Cage. Lizzie, the Bronx, the Cage. And with no other words, Ashling walks out of the room. As does Agathon, he pauses turns back, um, the High Regent would wish me to say that you're welcome to stay as late as you want. There's no one else on the grounds. It's really quite beautiful. The view of the river is really quite something. Thank you. Good Perhaps night. we will have a look around. He excuses himself a second time and shuts the door behind him. Well, isn't that interesting? Yeah. They're quite quick hmm. to make deals, Coco. It is the currency of Camarilla. That's what's getting to me. Why would someone like her warn us 
against the guy giving us orders, also from the Camarilla. Because there's clearly something afoot here about our dear Rafferty. Or she was testing my loyalty. Hmm. Ah. Well, to be quite honest, the three of us don't know Rafferty as well as you do. Correct. So Have why... you seen anything that would be untrustworthy? Our relationship has been very mutually beneficial. In what sense? In that he asks favors, and in turn, I am taken care of. So How has... did he get to you in the first place? Oh, we had a discussion about that earlier. We met at a charity auction, and we ran in the same social circles, and I happened to help him acquire a specific painting. And then everything kind of went from there. That's it? Not that's not it. That's just how it started. You got him a painting and you became a kindred. Well, there's a little gray area in between, isn't there? It's fucking too easy. Hmm. Well, mission accomplished for one. We went and talk to her. We can have a look around, I guess. Yeah. I don't understand why this painting is so interesting to Rafferty then, because the information we just got, it's just Lizzie's own magic. What? Where's the mystery? It's Because we know that Lizzie's not a Tremia, so she learned how to do this from someone. Right. Either she learned or... I'm not even sure if she learned. Maybe it was just somebody else altogether. Regardless, mystery solved. Masquerade breach, we took care of the problem, and we gave the information where we needed to. Case closed. Done, done, done. Hopefully we get better than a B grade. But what we should maybe be focusing on is the tagger. Yeah? Because that's also a masquerade breach if we can prove that that is blood on the newest art form. Yeah. You think they're doing the same thing? Probably. So someone's teaching... Various kindred, this magic, it seems. It's not just one person. The Tremere seem like they're really clicky. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if she was a little irked that she didn't know about what's going on. Oh. Well, hopefully we can get on her good side. She seemed interesting. She seemed cold. Well, I did give her information that's probably going to be very useful for her and probably not so good for Lizzie, which means that I might not have to owe that boon after all. Well, besides, I always think people can be only that cold to a certain point before they warm up to me. Huh. I'd like to search. Don't look so disgusted. It's just my face. <laughs> I'd like to search the uh, area where Ashley was standing to see if there's any hair on the ground. So. You search the chair, the table, the stone floor, maybe the tapestry behind her. Things don't leave the kindred body being undead as easily as they do the living. And your search is unfortunately fruitless. <sighs> Missed opportunity. Shall we explore the grounds? Yeah. Yeah, and maybe we'll find you a souvenir. Hmm. I hope so. What is a museum of the medieval period? So, the objects on display in its rooms and its corridors are those that you would expect to find in an exhibit from that time period. In addition to innumerable beautiful tapestries, there are collections of a variety of armor and weapons, items from personal use, gorgeously illuminated medieval manuscripts, painstakingly copied by mortal hands many, many centuries ago. Religious objects, of course, in great profusion. There are also different sorts of medieval costumes arranged on mannequins behind glass, showing the progression of style throughout the centuries. And Agathon was quite correct. The view from the grounds over the dark, moving waters of the Hudson are, in fact, very striking. 
Beyond that, of course, the lights of all the ports and harbors of the Jersey Shore. It's an idyllic place, really. Difficult almost to believe that you are still in the largest city in this country. It is at this point where you, Kalita, receive a text message. Found him. And then L. Where? Your turf. Be specific, please. The next text message is an address not too far from the Frosted Glass Gallery, as a matter of fact. And then another. He's drinking tea. You've done well. We'll talk later. Okay. We found him. Huh? Oh. The guy that Lizzie was following? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we may have just sent Ashlyn Sturbridge after him, too. If she's looking for Lizzie and Lizzie's looking for that guy, who knows what's going to happen? I doubt that she's going to act on that information tonight. It doesn't matter what happens to Lizzie at this point. That's true, as long as she doesn't come after me. That's the most important thing. But she's not our friend. She's a tool. Wow, look at you. Maybe you're not so anarch after all in your tendencies. We're all tools, can't you see that? All right. Just Lizzie is useful, I want to keep her around. Fine. Let's go get this person. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So you want to follow up on it? Mm -hmm. I see. Um, taking the car south then. Yeah. Well, you're all the way up the northern end of Manhattan. You, one bridge from the Bronx up here, so. I it's hope. a bit of a lengthy drive, but it's late enough at night, perhaps, that it doesn't take quite so long as it might. Hopefully even New York City. a lot of tea. <laughs> even New York City has expressways that sometimes help. You wind your way down the west edge of Manhattan past Morningside Heights, the Upper West Side, Midtown, Hell's Kitchen, finally finding yourself back in the Chelsea neighborhood you now call your territory. Do you want Wilcox to take you right to the address that Lizzie gave you? I want to do a little surveillance from the car, mm. if that's possible. Of course it is. Driving around in the vicinity, it's not hard to spot him. He's sitting right out in the open on a sidewalk at a table outside a very fashionable bistro. And he is indeed, or at least he appears to be, drinking tea. His attention, however, is not on the people around him or on his beverage. He is looking across the street. And what you see there is a nightclub with a rather obvious name, Club Crimson. There are a number of people surrounding the velvet rope waiting to get in. And some of the party inside has spilled out onto the sidewalk. A lot of talking, a lot of kissing, a lot of revelry. The bouncers don't seem to be controlling the flow of people 
in and out of the club. They're just letting people move in and out without checking anything. Now that seems off. Do you think he's waiting for somebody? It looks like he's staking out whatever's going on here. Maybe more kindred shit? Probably, with a name like that. I would like to speak with him, but I don't want him to know of your presence. He already knows of you, Kia. Right. Question is, do you approach him here or do we follow him? I think maybe approaching him here might be an option as well as following. We still have Lizzie in our back pocket, your little play toy, right? I'm training her. Maybe you can train her in following him as soon as he's done talking to me. I'll send her a text. And I do text Lizzie. What do you say? I say, having an impromptu meeting, but keep an eye on him afterwards. Okay. We got you back, Coco. If things go south, we'll help. Thanks. I do want to know what's inside the club, so if it's at all possible to kind of snoop around there too. We want to know why he has eyes in there. Sure, right. I can investigate. I'm gonna get out the car. So you're going to get out the car, approach the bistro. Do you let him see you? Absolutely, in fact, I call out and say, I told you I'd find you. He looks a little surprised, checks his watch sooner than I'd thought. I have my ways. Won't you join me? Sure. Tea? I've got juice. Ah, well, I suppose that's one way of keeping secrets. Where are your friends? What friends? Come now. I'm not well liked. No, your clan rarely is, but then neither is mine, so something in common. Evidently. What is your clan? Have you guessed? No, perhaps not. Who knows? Sires rarely educate their child appropriately, although heaven knows we try. Well, evidently there is a lot of kindred who can wield illusions, so care to dispel this one? He looks around to make sure that he's not easily overheard. The clan Ravnos, does it mean anything to you? I doubt it. Heard a thing or two. Hmm. The lost clan, the doomed clan, the dead clan. I see, clearly. Wanderers, vagabonds. That makes sense as to why you wander into the uh, art gallery. Does it? Hmm. So, if you're not going to uh, bring your friends along, what do you want? I want to know why you're in the art gallery tonight. I wanted to see if that painting by Seraph was still there. Your child? Now, whatever gave you that idea? I see and hear a lot of things. Hmm. Very clever. Yes. Why do you keep looking at her art? It's beautiful. Can't one appreciate the work of one's flesh and blood? You could, but I have a sneaking suspicion that you have more motive. Oh, don't we all? Come now, let's not mince words here. You don't trust me, I don't trust you, no one trusts anybody else. Kindred, puppet masters, manipulators, blah, 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 blah. So tedious. So tedious. Of course I have other reasons. I'm not going to tell you. It's none of your business, for one thing. Okay. Well, I just had information as to where her next installation was, so if you were actually trying to track her, I could probably help you. Ooh, but clearly you don't want my help. You do not play really? fair. Now that might be information that could possibly Try some additional words out of me. You're already learning to play the game. 
I learn fast. Mm. And what piece are you on the chessboard of the Camarilla? It's yet you... to be determined. Oh, how disappointing. I thought you'd, of course you would say, I'm a queen. Or at least a rook. I like your way of thinking. Well, you might be nothing but a pawn. Who knows, we'll see. Meanwhile, I believe the rest of the coterie was checking out the club, is that right? Yep. Yes. Is it just Kim or is it everyone together? Uh, Braun is staying behind to keep an eye on Coco. Ah, from the car or from you the car. merged onto the street? Actually, no, I'm gonna go out on the street. I, I blend in. Mm, oh. More Tell or him. less. I'll activate silence of death too, so I'm not making noise. I remember that uh, you can't interact with things. Yeah. So bumping into people, doorways, I'll stay still. Do you want to try to stay within earshot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay. Let's make a... Oh, no. Um, <laughs> let's make a roll here. Your dice pool for trying to sneak, certainly being unheard, is helpful, yeah. but in a busy city like this with all the traffic and the street noise, it's hardly necessary to use supernatural means to cover up the sound of footsteps. Hmm. hmm. Certainly... Let's go with dexterity and stealth. And can you add, let's add a, let's add dice for your obfuscate. Sure. Add one die. All right. Remember to include your hunger die in the pool. Yeah. That's one success. Mm. Well, as I said, fortunately for you, it's hardly necessary to be silent in a city with so much ambient noise. Yeah. But you also wanted to remain unseen, and you don't have any preternatural ability to conceal yourself. Is that right? That's correct. Ooh, okay. Well, let's make it resolve and streetwise. Any adding anything else? Probably not. No. It's fine. That's a big zero. <laughs> That's a nothing. Ugh. Goose egg. Zero. Well, Coco clocks you. Whether or not she decides to say anything about it is, of course, up to her. We don't know yet if Argus has seen you, too. Kim, you are going into the club, or you're at least approaching the entrance? I'm approaching the entrance. I'm going to activate heightened senses so that I can Ooh. hear our conversations. Kalita, you are remaining in the car with Wilcox? No, I tell Wilcox to leave the car running, and I'm approaching with Kian. Going together. Okay. Heightened senses, of course, enlarges all of your senses at once, not just one at a time. So. The night is a kaleidoscope of sight and sound and sensation and taste and sense on the night wind. This feels familiar. You recall the cage, all those people grouped together entwined languidly, offering themselves to the fangs of the kindred, desiring the kiss. This throng of people drifting in and out of the club, hanging around outside, has that same vibe. Kalita, it's a... Not to be crude. Blood club. Ah. Humans offering themselves. Makes sense. Be strange otherwise if the bodyguards were just letting people in and out for no reason. Who do you think he's looking for in this place? I don't know, but I can go talk to that guard to see at least who runs this club. Go ahead, I'll stay hidden. Okay. So Kim, you're not approaching any further. You're gonna hang back? I'm gonna stay hidden uh, so that I can still see Kalita, but so that I'm not uh, visible to the patrons. 
Mm. If that's possible. Well, there are probably enough parked cars, storefronts, and other obstacles to achieve that for you. It's not a guarantee, however. And Kalita. Mm. As soon as you approach the people out on the sidewalk, several of them turn to you. They look at you appreciatively. They reach out to touch. They make fond, appreciative noises. They seem to know a predator when they see one. Hmm. Please, it's my turn next. I've been waiting for over an hour. You've been waiting? I've been waiting over an hour. It's my turn. For Please. What? You know. You can say it. We could just, you know, we could just, I mean, right here is fine by me. I don't need to go inside. Okay, maybe it isn't my turn, but I have been waiting over an hour. Oh, oh, so have I. I I've, please. What would you like? We'd like to serve you. Really? Is that so? Please let us serve you. You're going to have to show me that you deserve it. They look at each other a little uncertain of exactly what you mean, but one of them bends low and reaches for your hand. Hmm. Brings it to his lips, kisses it slow and respectfully, like a supplicant kissing the hand of his monarch. You may stand. He straightens up. Please. Hmm. It might be unfair to everybody else who's been waiting. Who cares about them? Okay. But not out here. Okay. Yeah, right. Be discreet. That's what they're always telling us, right? Be discreet. Mm -hmm. I'll meet you inside. How are they dressed? Because this is a nice neighborhood. They are well dressed. You would say, if you had to guess, these are your garden variety young investment bankers. Mm. Sharp suits, nice ties, expensive haircuts. You'll do. Aren't you going to escort me inside? Yes, I am going to escort you inside. Um, he awkwardly offers his arm, clearly unaccustomed to the jet. To, yes, right this way. And I kind of turn and nod. To I follow. Kia. Yeah. You're going to come along too? Yes. Yes, inside. I'm locking eyes with Kalita. I'm trying to figure out what, you know, she's throwing down. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes. Let's go in. Let's go in. So, past the bouncers and inside the club. Meanwhile, back out at the bistro, discussing things over tea. Well, you appear possess information that I want, perhaps I know something you would like to know as well. He gestures across the street at the club. Oh? We could trade. We could. I think it's a basis for business, don't you think? Though so I'm interested in a favor. Hmm. Never been one for those open-ended favors, really. Not exactly Camarilla material, then, am I? Not quite. I guess information about the club will suit me just fine. Who goes first? You do. Age before beauty. Ooh. You know, they've said that La Sombra are ruthless, but really, I had no idea. What do you think it is? No, that's not fair. I did agree. I did agree to play by your rules. Fair is fair. 
course. It's the ministry. What else? They're not exactly subtle about what they do. And they're siphoning off what they want from the good people of Chelsea. Interesting. Do you know who runs this? Mm, not directly, but unless I miss my guess, Miss Simone is involved somehow. Simone? Oh, yes. You've heard the name, I see. I've met her, actually. Well, she is the uh, most notable representative of that particular clan in all five boroughs, I would think. Makes a lot of sense now, her laying amongst the bodies that I saw the other night. Ooh, intriguing. Yes. Simone does love her pleasures. She does. In fact, she frequents the same place that perhaps maybe even your childer would. And Simone has never mentioned Sarah, but not out of the realm of the possibility. So, I've kept my end of the deal. You want the information on your childer? I want to know where the piece of art is you mentioned. Well, you're not going to find it here in Manhattan now, are you? She rarely comes here. Yes, it's in the Bronx. Of course, that's where she likes to stay. I could have guessed that myself. Could mm. you be a little more specific? Well, the art piece is a golden sun. Strange choice, but... Hmm. And traipsed around it are bloody handprints. That doesn't sound like Sarah. She... Her medium is exclusively, you know, sugar, sugar, psh, 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 spray paint. Maybe she was on a date. And perhaps the date got a little riled up. A date? A date. She always did have terrible taste in boyfriends. Hmm. But my guess is that if anybody else finds out that those hand paints are, let's say, blood, that could also be a breach of the masquerade, and gee, I believe the first time that you and I met was because I was investigating a possible breach in the masquerade. Now, I don't think you would want anything to happen to your child. Breach of the masquerade? I mean, what even is that? Who decides, ooh, this is a breach, that's not a breach, that's a breach times three? I mean, really. Listen to yourself. All right, all right, I understand. So, you can't tell me exactly where to find my child's artwork. Seems like you got the better end of this deal. You told me information I could have guessed for myself. Very yes, you good. you caught my bluff. Very, very good. I won't forget it. Good day. Mm, or good. night. Uh, ta. Meanwhile, Bron, you have overheard these things. Yeah. Coco, of course, knows that you're there. Yeah, yeah. I'll motion over Coco this way. And uh, if he still sees me, I'll give him a look, too. He blinks twice, apparently unaware that you were standing there. That's right. Ah, of course. Let's go. This neighborhood is really quite something. Meanwhile, inside Club Crimson. There's a set of stairs leading down immediately, and then another set, and then a third set. Wherever this club is, it's well under the surface of the streets, but that's New York for you. At the bottom of the stairs, you find four security guards. They're dressed in dark jackets, gray t-shirts, have a little drop of blood embroidered onto them. Mm-hmm. We'd like to pass? I doubt it. Why is that? Never seen you here before. I wasn't aware that I needed an invitation. Well, everybody needs an invitation. 
Who do I see about that? I don't think he has quite that many dice. We don't want to be rude or cause you any kind of trouble, but it's a private club, and unless you're on Miss Simone's guest list, I can't let you in. Would you like to make an appointment? Can I activate awe? And you always say... activate awe. Mm -hmm. It requires no rouse check. It is simply your blood right to be cooler than everybody around you when you want to be. I'm sure that somewhere on that list is my name. He is no unsuspecting ordinary mortal, and yet he is not necessarily prepared to defeat the powers of presence. Hmm. What name was that? Kalita. Kalita. Please wait here. He passes through the doorway behind him. The other three guards tighten up, stand shoulder to shoulder, as if prepared to keep you out by force if necessary. You're such big, Please. strong humans, aren't you? The mortal who has been hovering around you gets in your line of sight. Please, do we have, we don't have to go inside. Shh, be quiet, not now. And I Fine. use my strength to sort of pick <laughs> up a little, just <clears throat> place them Okay, inside. I understand, I can wait a bit. Good. The uh, security guard returns a moment later. I'm sorry, Miss Cleet, I did not know who you were. You must forgive me. Miss Simone isn't here this evening, hmm. and <clears throat> things aren't in a fit state to receive such illustrious guests. She hmm. begs a favor. Which is? She craves your pardon and asks you to return in two nights when she will be prepared to receive you with all proper respect. Wow. Well. In return for which, she offers you her personal boon. Kalita. I know the boon sounds nice, but what's going on back there that we can't see? Perhaps it's just not fit for us. This is our territory now. Which means they shouldn't be hiding anything from us. True. Should but I go perhaps in? perhaps it's better. You want to wait? Do you want to go in now? I can't let that happen. I'm so sorry. I don't want to fight you, but we will. Do I clock these security guards as mortals? Difficult to say. Your heightened senses are still active, so you can stare at them. Well, they're breathing. They have a pulse. The perspiration on their skin is real, so it's possible that they are ghouled servants of someone else. But they might be mere mortals, too. Restraint, right? Yes. My name on that list, plus three. Absolutely. And a boon from Miss Simone. Yeah. I, go to sh I go to shake his hand. Pleasure doing business? Reluctantly, he shakes your hand, too. It's I warm. Squeeze it as hard as I can. Ooh. You are, are you going to um, use preternatural strengths? Yes. Make a rouse check. Success. So, adding additional power to your grip, you squeeze. Um, you can feel the tendons and the tissues starting to give way. A bone pops. <laughs> he collapses to his knees. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Crackle. <laughs> pop. You 
won't say no to us again. He cradles his mangled, injured hand next to him. No. Well, probably not. I'll be sure to let Simone know that her security isn't so tight. Great, thanks. Appreciate it. Mm. Fine, let's go. It was fun, though. Well. Sorry, baby. Not tonight. It's not fair. But you have learned a great deal, of course. You've got uninvited guests in your territory. Mm. You've learned a little bit about potential ally or enemy. And you've had some very interesting information from one of the most powerful kindred in the Camarilla Court of New York. That's a lot to take in. So this seems like the perfect place to end our vampire story for now. 